Good afternoon all. Uh, today I thought I'd go right back to basics and build a transistorized circuit um, using this mm, 72 plus amazing science workshops uh, electronics set. Uh, so I've got my bag of wires and I've also got this thing which has a magnet at one end for activating the reed switch and the other end acts as a cover for putting over the LDR, which strangely seems to have the symbol of a photodiode. And uh, I've also got the uh, manual for this set, uh, Tronex connects to the circuit, uh, 72 exciting educational experiments. And I'm going to do this one right up at the top left hand corner. And it is, uh, well, it's an LDR, which in my case is going to be a photodiode two transistors, I'm not quite sure why you need so many transistors, and a light emitting diode. Now this LED actually has a resistor uh, soldered in series with it because I've taken the back off this thing and had a look at it. They call it, it's this one, the big green one, the 8mm one, they call it a 6 volt LED. It's just an LED with a integral 100 ohm resistor. So there's our sort of high current circuit. It's not going to be that high of course because it's just an LED, so why the two transistors? But let's build it and uh, see how it works. Right, first things first, I'm going to link the positive of one battery pack uh, to the negative of another. So I can't see what I'm doing very well. Like so, so that I've got the full six volts across here. Right, I've photocopied the uh, circuit diagram and the instructions, which doesn't say a lot. It just says complete all wiring connections basically wiring by numbers and then how to operate the circuit there's nothing about how it actually works uh, so i want to try and work out for myself how it works now i guess it would help to uh, mark on here a few things oh it's going to be difficult to write on there but i'd like to mark that as a pnp and that as an npn that would be useful uh, right, we've got NPN collector to PNP base, uh, 28 to 30, so NPN collector to PNP base. Oh, get in there, that goes in like that. And uh, we've got PNP collector to the LED anode, 35 to 31. Now this one's interesting, uh, 77, which is the switched negative, also goes to the LDR 61, but because this is a photodiode, um, they must have had to get these numbers the right way around because an LDR, and I've actually put a little LDR there across this switch. Uh, it won't matter if I don't press the switch so that I can try it with an LDR instead of a photodiode. But um, yeah, they must have got these numbers the right way around so that the photodiode actually does something because it probably won't do the same thing if it's uh, in the reverse direction. Right, that's the circuit completely wired up. Um, I've changed the exposure a bit because uh, this was going a bit dark. This is now a bit light. Um, but I'll leave that there so that we can see uh, the circuit at all times. Let's switch on. Uh, nothing happens, but then this is an LED light activated by darkness. So I can create darkness over the LDR, or in this case, a photodiode with my little cover. And yeah, the light comes on when it gets dark. Fantastic. Um, so, okay, how does this circuit work? Well, let's assume it's dark and let's assume this is an LDR to start with. Actually, one thing I wanted to try uh, before I do this is just flipping these connections to the photodiode around. Ah, oh, that's a problem. I've, let's move that wire there up to there. That'll make it easier to flip these connections around. Now you can see that with this disconnected, um, this is a very high resistance cross here, so if this were an LDR, it would be uh, the equivalent of darkness. Let's flip these around. And the circuit doesn't do anything, because this is, of course, a diode, not an LDR. So it's a little bit naughty um, of this electronic set to be referring to this as an LDR. Um, if you follow the numbers, of course, it works. But if you don't follow the numbers, well, it doesn't work. And uh, now I've just routed the wires um, to my actual LDR. I'm just getting close because you can't really see it there very well. Uh, yes, it's here. You can see the characteristic zigzag line between the two uh, electrodes there. 
I've just uh, connected it across the push switch because the push switch won't actually do anything. Let's see what the effect of that is. Uh, actually, of course, if I press the push switch, uh, now is that bad? No, it probably isn't because I'll be shorting the base of this NPN transistor to ground. I don't think that's going to do any harm, but that just reinforces the uh, off state of the LED. I need to make this a high resistance by covering it up. And yes, that turns the light on. So the LDR kind of works the same as the um, photodiode. So I might as well go back to the photodiode because it's easier to cover the light because it's got a little black shroud around it. Um, so yes, this circuit works. I don't have to block that much. And in fact, there's a very fast transition. You can see that it's, um, although I can control the uh, power to that LED, the change in light level is very tiny. So it switches rapidly from the off state to the fully on state. And I'm pretty certain that's the purpose of that uh, second transistor. Because what we've effectively got here is um, two transistors in, well, it's not a Darlington, but it's something like a Darlington arrangement um, where we get high gain. We get the gain of the NPN transistor multiplied by the gain of the PNP. Um, so what I'd quite like to do is compare this circuit with um, a simpler circuit where I don't have the PNP transistor and I'll just take this diode with its integral resistor and move it up here into the collector arm of the NPN transistor. So when the NPN transistor turns on, current will flow through the diode, which will be up here, the LED, uh, down through the transistor and we'll have light. It should work in exactly the same way, but of course we won't have the gain of one transistor multiplied by the gain of the other. Um, so we'll, should we expect a slower transition, not this rapid switch uh, from light to dark, which I think is being afforded by the the gain of this pair of transistors? Well, let's find out. So I've drawn uh, where I'm moving this LED to. I'm moving it up here. I also tried to draw a little resistor in series with the LED, but it's turned out just to be a bit of a squiggle. But this is where I'm going to put it up here. I can kind of leave this uh, PMP in circuit because when I disconnect the LED, its collector will just be floating. So uh, that shouldn't do any harm to it, I don't think. Right, so positive, oh look at that, I can uh, control the LED. Positive of the LED, I'm going to move from collector of this transistor to collector of uh, this one, which, uh, no, I'm going to move it to positive, so emitter of the um, PNP. It's very difficult to do this. Uh, okay, so that means that the LED is on all the time. Now what I need to do is take the negative end of the LED uh, disconnect that from ground. I'll just leave that one lying in there and connect it to the collector of the NPN. And of course it doesn't work at all, uh, even if I cover that up completely. And I think I've worked out why. I've got what is essentially a diode here. The emitter base uh, junction of this PMP transistor is across my LED. So of course um, I'm never going to get more than 0.6 volts across that junction so I'm never going to have enough voltage to actually light the LED. If I pull the base connection of the PMP out um, then yeah we can see that uh, as I cover this uh, photodiode this LED is coming on and now of course this whole section of the circuit um, up through there is not there it's just this very simple one transistor switch um, with the LED up here in the collector arm. Now one thing I've noticed um, to switch that LED on I'm having to make it quite a lot darker than I did before. The switching speed is reasonably good. I think it's a bit slower than it was but um, the fact that I'm having to make this quite a bit darker to get this LED to come on is um, because I've now only got one gain stage, the gain of this NPN transistor. And this 100k resistor is a very high value, very little current is going to be flowing down through the base emitter junction of the NPN. Um, so I am having to make sure that this resistance is, well it's a diode, but make sure that there's no current flowing down here, um, make this completely dark to get enough current flowing through this base emitter to get a, a, a current flow down through collector emitter. Now, one thing I should be able to do uh, with this circuit is lower the value of this 100K resistor 
Uh, 100k, 6 volts. We're only going to get um, a maximum of something like 600 microamps, I think it is, flowing through base emitter of this NPN transistor. That's a very tiny current. So let's um, move this up to the 10k resistor. I'm going to have to move both those wires up to there. Uh, I think that should be it. Oh, now I'm having trouble turning that off at all. Is that responding at all? Oh, that uh, doesn't seem to have worked. Now, interestingly, it does work if I take the photo diode out and actually put the LDR in. But um, to take the resistance of the LDR low enough to pull this voltage down to 0.6 volts, um, we need a 10 to 1 ratio here because that's 6 volts at the top there and I need less than 0.6 here. So we need something less than uh, 10k, I believe it would be. I'm surprised that the light coming through the window isn't enough. But if I shine my torch on there, then I do get enough light to turn that uh, LED off. But uh, oh, well, it seems I can actually if I shine the torch on the photo diode. Yes, I can get uh, this transistor base to a low enough potential or at least uh, as a small enough current flowing through the base emitter junction that I am actually able to turn that off and turn this LED off. But uh, the circuit just doesn't work very well with ambient light because it doesn't do anything uh, from dark to ambient light with the 10k. Uh, with the 100k there in circuit, yes, I can make it dark enough to turn the LED on, but I'm not sure that's turning on as brightly as it was it was, it was turning on when I had the uh, the two transistor circuit. So yeah, interesting. Certainly the gain of the two transistors does help with the operation of the circuit to make it more of a switch and less of a, well, sort of amplifier. Right, back to the original configuration and uh, it's nice and sensitive to sort of moderate levels of dark, moderate levels of light. The switching is nice and quick because I've got both transistors in there. The gain of both transistors are involved in the switching of the circuit, but there is something about this circuit. This LED up here now is not there. I should rub it out, I suppose. Um, that bothers me because there's a current limit in the main output path because there's a 100 ohm resistor um, in series with this LED. I checked underneath the board yesterday and it's uh, just been soldered into one leg of that LED. So that's okay. Um, the current flowing in through the base of this NPN is limited by this 100k, so that's a tiny current. But look at this path here from uh, 6 volts VCC down through the emitter of the PMP, base of the PMP, collector of the NPN, emitter of the NPN to ground. There's no current limit in that path. So what's actually stopping um, a very large current flowing down through this path when this NPN transistor switches on? And uh, I had to think long and hard about this. So I've been looking at my uh, Art of Electronics book, uh, which was very kindly given to me actually by Jonty, who gave me that big solar panel. Thanks, uh, thanks Jonty for this. I've read the whole chapter on transistors and I think I might have an inkling as to what's preventing a total meltdown of this circuit. Um, it seems from reading that book, which quite frankly I should have read about 40 years ago, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I was so busy playing with electronics. I never got around to learning actually how transistors work. Well, I'm going to do that now. It's never too late to learn. Um, yes, it seems that the gain of a transistor is much lower when it's in saturation than when it's in its active mode. Now, of course, this is saturating this transistor. We're not trying to bias it into any particular position. We're turning it on and fully on. So the gain of this NPN could be very low indeed. I mean, it could be less than 10. Now, if we've only got 600 microamps flowing base to emitter, then we're only going to get uh, possibly 6 milliamps or even less flowing down this other branch. And I think it's this 100K resistor that's actually limiting the current flow through this arm. But what bothers me about this is if I change that to 10K or even 1K, if someone had this set and just thought, oh, let's try lots of different... Uh, resistor values and see what happens. I could put so much current through base emitter on the NPN that a damaging current would flow down through this path. And there's no 
current limiting resistor in there. And I was just wondering what would happen if I put a resistor between 28 and 30 as a current limiting resistor. Would that reduce the gain? Um, I can't think at the moment whether that would, but it would certainly protect uh, well, both these transistors from a very damaging large current flowing down that route. So let's, um, well, at least just see if it works. So this link here, which is uh, collector NPN to base PNP, let's take that out and route these two down to the 10K resistor. And that certainly uh, works fine. It doesn't seem to have affected the sort of rapid um, switch on. So I don't think it's affected the gain much. Uh, what's gain? Gain is the current gain, uh, base emitter to collector emitter current gain. It wouldn't actually, the, a resistor in there, to, to my mind, wouldn't actually change the gain. It would just limit the maximum amount of current allowed to flow um, emitter base on the PNP. So I don't think it has affected the gain. It might possibly have changed the point at which the light to dark transition occurs. I can't quite think why that would be. Um, 10K is a very high value resistor. I mean, 1K would be enough in there to protect um, these two resistors. Uh, with a 1K, we got six volts, so that would be six milliamps. I mean, both these transistors are gonna be able to take six milliamps. Perhaps I'll move that to the 1K. I'll do that right now. Uh, are the 1Ks up here? So let's put that on there. That's still going to be enough protection for the circuit. Again, that doesn't seem to have affected the gain terribly. It doesn't seem to have moved that dark point. The sun keeps coming in and out actually, so that might be affecting the, uh, the dark point. But certainly a 1K in there protects these two transistors from an excessive current. I mean, with 100K here, it's not going to happen, but if this were lowered um, and we had a gain of even five here, with, um, I don't know, uh, several milliamps through here, we could get a large current down here, which could get close to the uh, current limit, the, the maximum, absolute maximum current of these two transistors. So I just feel happier with a bit of a resistance in there. And um, there are some other circuits in here like this one, where they're using this two transistor arrangement to drive the motor, uh, this electric motor up here, which has this sort of silly spinning colored disc thing on it. And uh, this is called uh, a stop and spin color thingy bob, what's it? So that's got the LDR and uh, they haven't got a diode across that motor, which is a bit naughty. And also I've had a look in that motor module and there's no capacitor across there either. So there are some naughty circuits in here. Now, just one other observation about these two transistors. I'll get in close to them because uh, you can't see it from this angle. Um, you should be able to see that the uh, NPN there is a small TO92 package, whereas the PMP is actually a much taller, um, I can't remember the number on this, it's a funny one, but uh, I think it's a 2SD or something. It's, um, oh look, I'm triggering the uh, LED there. Yeah, it's a much taller package that's evidently intended to dissipate more uh, power as heat because it's got a larger surface area. So yes, um, might be interesting to try and get some replacements for these so that I could actually try uh, putting far too much current through this transistor pair and see if I can blow them up. Uh, yeah, so that's um, quite an interesting circuit. Certainly the, the fact that they've used a pair of transistors rather than one, it certainly doesn't work as well. You can make it work with one transistor, but it's its performance is a lot better with the two. I'm just not sure I like this um, arrangement where the current limiting on the base of the first transistor effectively limits the current through the whole circuit. Um, maybe it's okay, maybe it's not, but by adding a small protection resistor in there certainly didn't seem to affect the performance of this circuit very much at all. Uh, yeah, two transistors so that the gain of one is multiplied by the gain of the other. The gain of transistors being lower when they're in their saturation uh, mode as opposed to active mode. I think I've learned that today. Um, this sort of works a bit like a Darlington. A Darlington also, Darlington of course has two transistors of the same uh, polarity, either two NPNs or two PNPs. Um, this isn't a complementary Darlington either. Something called a, a Sikli, I think it is, 
which does use an NPN and a PMP, but it's not quite in this configuration. Um, yes, two transistors really to get better gain. That seems to be why they've done that. And uh, how a photodiode can be made to behave very similar to um, uh, an LDR, a light dependent resistor or a photoresistor, um, but calling it an LDR and showing the zigzag symbol in the circuit diagram is a little bit naughty when it's actually a photodiode. I wonder if they did this actually because of the cadmium thing. I wonder if they were worried about uh, ROHS and the cadmium sulfide in an LDR. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. It um, forced me to do a little bit of reading um, around the subject of transistors. I, I know more about transistors uh, today than I did yesterday. So I'm going to do more of these um, very simple uh, transistorized experiments. Where I can, I'll do them on this kit. But where this kit doesn't actually have the parts I need, I might do them on breadboard. But uh, yeah, I'll be returning to this um, transistor basics style video at some point in the future. Cheerio.